What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So this video is one that I'm pretty excited about um, kicking off and kind of diving into. Um, this is an extension that allows you to do parametric modeling with nodes inside of SketchUp. And so this extension was the extension voted on by my supporters on Patreon this week. So Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, um, you're interested in voting on the extension that I cover every week, make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can find this extension by going to the Sketchication plugin store and searching for parametric modeling. And so parametric modeling is a new extension from Samuel T that allows you to do parametric modeling with a node editor inside of SketchUp. So if you click on this, um, there's more info contained over here. Um, so there's a little bit of documentation on the documentation page. There's also a forum thread that you can go to um, in order to ask any questions that you have about the extension. So there's a lot of information in here about this. Um, do note that this is still in beta. He's still working on it and developing it, but it's got a lot of interesting applications. So let's take a look at what it does. So first things first, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the button for open nodes editor. And so when you open the nodes editor, this is basically the editor that allows you to create your different nodes that are gonna create things inside of SketchUp. So for example, and notice how you can work inside of SketchUp as you go. But notice for example, that if we wanted to create a box, right? Like a simple shape, like a box, all you need to do is just click right here in order to add a box node over here on the right hand side. And so notice how what that has is that has options in here for names, materials, um, layers and tags, as well as inputs down below. And so right now, for example, notice how our box is pretty small. So it doesn't make a very good size box. So what we wanna do is we wanna pass a value to these options right here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna adjust the size of the object that's created inside of our workspace. So. What we would do in this case is we want to go find the option for a number. If we click in here and click on number, what this does is this gives us a box that we can drag around in here where we can actually generate that number. And then what we would do is we would draw a line between that number and where we want it to go. In this case, for example, we have a node number right here that's feeding into the width. Well, notice how at the moment nothing's being created. And so the reason nothing is being created is because we haven't actually fed this a value. So what we wanna do is we wanna go in here and we wanna type in a value. For example, let's say that we typed in a value of 12 inches. And notice how now what that's doing is that's generating the box with a width of 12 inches. And so let's say that we wanted to feed it a depth and a height as well. We just add another box right here, drag this over. We would give this a depth of six inches. Then we'll give it another value. We'll give it a value for height like this. And so for the height, we can give it a value of 12 inches as well. Um, and you can also use the up or down arrow in order to adjust this. And notice how this is going to adjust live inside of SketchUp. Um, I have found that it doesn't really like to let you just like crank on this button. Um, sometimes that seems to work, sometimes it doesn't. But you can tap the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard in order to quickly change this value up and down. And so if you look at the top of this, notice that there's a lot of different functions in here. So there's mathematical functions in here. Um, so add, subtract, as well as calculate, which is gonna give you options for more complex things. Um, and we're not gonna do too much with that for right now. So we're just gonna right click and click on remove this node. But then there's also options in here for operations as well. So we'll talk about the point and the vector in a minute, but there's options in here for intersecting solids, uniting solids, as well as doing push pull, moving, rotating, and more. So basically what you can do is you can put all of these together in order to generate different things inside of your model. So let's say for example, that we wanted to set not only the box, but also the location of the box. So what we could do is we could click in here and we could add the move node over here, right? And so we're gonna click the group input into the move node right here. We'll notice how this jumped over a little bit, but what this isn't doing is this isn't giving us a value um, or it's not really giving us an option of a value that we can actually adjust. And um, what you're going to notice is like right now, this has an input of point. 
Well, the thing is with point, you can't put a number into it, right? So if I was to add a number node and try to drag it into the point, it's not gonna work because those aren't compatible nodes. What you would wanna do instead is you would wanna add a point node. So we would click in here for point, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to set a point on an axis. So for example, let's say we wanted to move this along the red axis by a value of 12, right? Well, what you would do is you would drag the value for point over here, and then on the X axis, you would just type in a value of 12. And so basically what that's doing is that's taking this object and it's moving it over on this axis using a point function. And so now let's say that we want to apply a material to this object. Well, what we could do is we could add a paint function right here, move this over, and then click a value from groups to groups. So what that means is now whatever material we select in here, that's gonna get applied to the object in our model. So we can set this to apply materials or a lot of other things as well. And so there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. So for example, this is really helpful for creating things like arrays. Let's say that we wanted to make something where we make copies of an object, right? So we're just basically gonna create another node group down below. So what we would do is we would click on the button for draw prism right here. So we're just gonna create an array of prisms. So multiple prisms, right? And then we could go ahead and we could apply some numbers to this just to set the size. And so one thing that would be nice is it would be nice to be able to set the insertion point for these objects because it seems like it always puts them in in the same place unless I'm missing something and then you have to kind of drag them down, which for larger node groups can get a little um, annoying. But um, let's go ahead and let's apply some numbers to this. So whoops, we'll go maybe 12 here. We'll apply a height of maybe like four, just like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the move on this one up above to 24, just so it's out of the way. And so let's say that we wanted to create a number of different prisms in here. Well, what we would do is we would basically want to create the option or we would want to select the option for copy. So we're just going to mouse over this, click on copy. We're going to drag this over right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the group in here like this. And notice how nothing's happening. And nothing's happening because we don't have a value in here for number of copies. And so notice in this one, you can just come in here and you can just type in a value for the number of copies that you want to create. But what it's doing right now is it's creating 12 copies, but they're right on top of each other, right? So if I was to come over here and click on this and move it, notice how there's going to be 12 of these copies, but we haven't given it a value to actually move these along. So after we create our copies, what we would do is we would just add a move node right here. What that's gonna tell us is once we create a copy right here, it's going to move it. So now, notice how it's just moving these by the default. And so notice how if we add a number and try to drag this over, it's not going to work, right? The reason it's not going to work is because we don't need to give it a singular number, we need to give it a direction, right? So to do that, we need to use the point function. So we're gonna remove this node. We're gonna add a point function right here. We'll just click and drag this over and then drag this value into this point. Well, now we can set the spacing of those copies. So for example, notice how right now that's creating these with a spacing of 12 inches in this direction. And you can adjust this to whatever you want. So we could do like 24 inches like this, but you can also give it a Y and a Z. So for example, if I was to give it a value of two, or six, notice how these copies are going to go up, right? So they're not just going forward anymore, they're also going up. Well, this gives us a lot of cool, um, this gives us a lot of cool possibilities because you can stack these on top of each other. So for example, right now we have these going over 24 and up six, but let's say that we also wanted to rotate these, right? So what we could do is we could add a rotate node I'm gonna drag that over here. And we're gonna take the groups that are created and we're gonna set these so that they're rotated. And so notice how we can set the angle of rotation for each one of these. So I could set this to a value of something like two. You can see how it's gonna rotate it two degrees every time that we do this. And so another thing we could do is notice how right now this is rotating this around the central point, right? So basically the origin of the object. Well, if you were to add a number in here and let's bring this number in 
drag it over and set our number to our center. And so what we want to do is we want to change our center point. So to do that, if you mouse over this, notice that this tells us it needs a point object. So let's just select a point, drag this over, and drag the point into our center. Well, what that means is that means that we're now setting the center point of this object. So for example, let's say that we entered a value in here. Um, we'll go ahead and leave it at zero for right now. And so what adjusting the point is going to do is it's gonna adjust where the origin of this object is. So notice how right now, for example, I can straighten out the way that this rotation is happening by moving my X up, right? So if I was to bring this way up, basically what this is doing is this is adjusting the point at which this rotates. And so this actually gets a lot more pronounced if you add to this value right here. So let's say for example, that we had, let's say that our angle is going to be maybe like 10 degrees for each one of these, right? So now what that's gonna do is instead of rotating this based on the central point, it's gonna rotate it based on the adjusted point. So remember if I go back to zero, And so by adjusting this and adding different values in here, you can get different results. And so notice how all of these are adjustable too. So for example, if I wanted these to go up more, I could adjust the Z value of this point right here. But this is all being mathematically calculated. So you could do really interesting things with like spiral stairs or other things like that. All right, so now let's create another file. So we're just gonna do a file, new. And for this one, let's create a staircase. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the nodes editor and we're going to start by adding a box, which we're then going to use to create our stair. And remember that we need to add numbers in here for the width, depth, and height. And then we need to copy it. So we'll just add a copy node right here. We'll hook this node into this one. We'll say that we want to create 10 copies for right now. And remember that these copies are currently being placed in place because we haven't told them where to go. So what we want to do is we want to add a move modifier. So we're going to add move right here. We'll put this group into this group. And then we want to add a point modifier or a point node over here. And we're going to say this step is going to move on the y-axis by 12 inches every time we create a copy. We're going to say it's going to move up 6 inches every time we create a copy. So what this does is this quickly, this quickly creates a stair shape inside of SketchUp. And then we could play around with this some more if we wanted to. So for example, we could add a rotate node. And so what we want to do is we want to add a vector modifier right here. And that's going to allow us to set the axis along which this is rotating. So we're going to set this so that it's rotating along the Z axis by entering a value of one. And we're going to set our angle to, we'll call it 10 degrees for right now. And so notice how this is starting to give us the result that we want, but the problem is it's rotating these based on the central. The problem is it's rotating these based on the center of this object. Right? So what we want to do is we want to add a point and adjust that center. So we're going to click on point and drag this over. We're going to drag that into our center like this. Well, now you can see how this is going to allow us to set that point on which this is rotating. So, and so right now, I've got 10 copies in here. And so what I want to do is I want to set my angle to, we're going to say 18 degrees each time, right? So for 10 copies, that gives us 180 degrees. And so you can see how what that's doing is that's rotating these along this corner right here. Well, we want to use this point that we added to adjust this. So what we want to do as we want to adjust this so that we've got some values 
in the x and y so that this is moving out a little bit instead of just rotating based on this point. So and notice how I can tap the up and down arrow keys in here in order to adjust the values really quickly. So for example, we might not want this. We might want this at maybe like 10. We want the other one at maybe like negative 36 or something like that. And so what that's doing is that's coming in here and that's rotating these based on this point. And so there's some trial and error in here. There might be a better mathematical way to do this, but this should give you an idea of how you can start using these nodes in order to generate things inside of SketchUp. So that's from an in this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Are you interested in trying out this extension? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp up content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.